Yeah, it's the offseason. We've got plenty of stuff to talk about. And we'll be dialing in on the defense today. we got a field demo talking about DBs. And i got a one-on-one with Rich on the corner. Oh, I can't <laughs> wait to hear that. But i got to step out because these guys have a special guest. And we do have a very special guest today, a man that needs no introduction, Jason Wright, the president of this team. How you doing, man? I'm good. I'm yes. good. Yeah, so I'm, I'm a little tired. A lot, a lot going on, but I'm good. I was going to say, it's a little quiet in the building, but <laughs> yeah. and everyone's gone. But what's going on with you right now? Oh, man. I mean, how much time we got? How yeah, much time do you need, man? Let's go. Uh, I mean, for, for us, um, on the business side, it's actually it's an important moment of preparation. Yeah. Okay. Because season's about to hit. We got to make sure the stadium is in right shape, shape for yeah. that opener mm-hmm. for all the preseason. Preparing for training camp. We're mm-hmm. hosting fans again. We're trying to open ourselves back up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, training camp. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, first time since COVID, you know? Yeah. yeah. What is that going to be like? Preparation now? Are yeah. y'all thinking about that now? Because, I mean, before it was easy because we in Richmond. We, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. We remember how yeah. Ashburn it used to be. Oh, yeah. 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 Things get exactly. crazy. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. Now we probably expecting a lot more. I heard something about the stands going to be That's out right. there. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. That. So we're putting up 2,000 stands that can hold 2,000 people. Mm hmm. And there's even like a VIP section for like business leaders, yeah. political leaders, folks that come here. We're doing, we're, tr- we're trying to do this right. Okay. Mm-hmm. But then it's going to be open. And, yeah. You know, we could, we can house up to 10,000 people here. How can park? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we gonna figure that out. <laughs> uh, it's not, well, we park actually, everywhere. <laughs> well, well, we partner with the, you know, the, the lots nearby need yeah. to be for staff, yeah, mm-hmm. players, stuff like, cause there's so many people on the mm-hmm. roster. Yeah. There's so many staff here, especially since we're going to be up here hosting. But we're working with Dulles Town Center okay. mm-hmm. to do a shuttle. Oh, All right. Park awesome. there yeah. at the mall. Bring yourself That'd here. That'd be great. You know, they're happy to have that because That'd it drives be people through yeah. there. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah. like, it was a good partnership that my That's team great. came up right. with to make it easy that for was us. Genius. Yeah. yeah. And it got to feel good right now to just, the cloud is gone and to just talk about football. Yeah. And this, this roster that Ron has built. Yeah. It gets, it don't get enough credit to me. That's right. Yeah, and and at that. the end of the I agree day, with that. What's the expectation for this roster? I, 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 I'm, you know, Ron will be mad because they, they, they want, they want to, you know, they don't want to <laughs> put too much them, out there. I'm yeah. going to put it out there. They're they like, going I, for a double I, digit win. I, I think that's right. Yeah. I think the roster has that much talent. Yeah. yeah. I really mm-hmm. do believe the roster has that much talent. If I think back to when I first got here and I look at the depth chart, just on offense, because I always think about offense. Yeah. 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 Y'all so, buy you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. 100%. <laughs> I have to remind myself, like, not to root against the defense. You don't have because, a, you don't have a time. <laughs> hey, In practice, man. I'd be out there, like, rooting against yeah, the defense. Yeah, like, no, 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 yeah. that's the one defense. They should be doing yeah. well right now. Right. It's just, you know, it's the, it's the bias. But so I pay attention to the offense. I look at just the receiving core. Mm-hmm. You look at the quarterback position, the running back right. position, yeah. offense. I mean, tight end across, across, the, board, across yeah. the board, the depth that we have and the talent at the top is mm-hmm. night and day difference. Defensive backfield is another yeah. one. Like yeah. the depth that you have in the defensive mm-hmm. backfield now mm-hmm. compared to when we got here is night and day. So mm-hmm. I just objectively look at that and I'm excited. Now yeah. at the same time, the schedule's harder. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, right? I don't look the at the schedule being harder. Yeah, the schedule change. is what the change. schedule change. is. Yeah. And guess what? Super Bowl contender, Philadelphia. We beat them. Yeah. Like the that's Cowboys, right. playoff right. contenders, we beat them. Yeah. Like at the end of the day, this yeah. roster has showed you when we're rocking and rolling, mm-hmm. we can contend yeah. with anybody. I agree with that. Yeah, and, agree with and, that. and guess what? I also think we got a better quarterback situation than we had last year. Yeah. And I think yeah, they can we'll hold you back no matter how good your position is. And and where I was going with the 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 schedule potential being yeah. harder mm-hmm. and the division improving and all that is mm-hmm. we've also improved not just on the roster but in the entire culture Coach, of the team yeah, like yeah. EB, what yeah. eb brings yeah it's uh, different it's totally. but it's but it's part of being competitive <laughs> it's it's part of actually honing your craft in mm-hmm. a mental way yeah. yeah to just not take any shit, I mean, yeah. 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 whatever yeah. it is yeah. Beat, yeah. beat that yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> nah. that but, that. but just not to, <laughs> yeah. but just not yeah. to take yeah. anything yeah. Yeah. and uh, to be assertive, the, the mindset you need to be successful on the field, because I don't know how it was for you, but when I was on the field, like, I'm trying to harm you. That yeah. Yeah. Like, so be, yeah, yeah. It, but you have to, you have to hone that, so you can't just turn that on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So you need that in practice. Absolutely. And, you know, you talked a little about football right there. And yeah. apparently you got a list of top three running backs you've been working on. You got that in the pocket somewhere? I mean, I always, I always have that. Because I'm always, I always wondering, have like, that. guys who played the position, I'm always wondering, like, yeah. who's your guys that yeah. you really, really feel good about that you respect a lot? Yeah. You I mean, like, it's hard to have, like, a top three. Uh, it's it's but, impossible. But, but I'll go I'll go with mine, and yeah. it's a personal Okay. Base. So the first one is Jim Brown. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Yeah. First one's Jim Brown, always at the and top. Why, why is that? Just, he is that. So, so I mean, I have a personal connection to him when I play for the Browns. I, I have see. lunch with him every week. Oh, awesome! Like, Great. I had these deep, profound conversations with a man who had been through so many ups and downs. Sure. Yeah successes and grave mistakes yeah. in his life and just owned it all like i just i learned a lot from yeah. him a lot from him but that's not the reason the reason <laughs> is strictly football yeah. yeah the man was the size of the offensive line in his days. faster Donald. than every other sucker on the field yeah. mm-hmm. and <laughs> was able to move more agile than yeah. them could catch yeah. the ball like imagine yeah, somebody like Derrick Henry, that's who he yes. is today. Yes. Derrick but Henry. even more so, because like, yeah, even more, yeah, even more so, it's yeah. like more athletic, it would, yeah. yeah, it would be like one of our old linemen, like Gates, yeah. <laughs> playing <laughs> playing halfback and being faster yeah. than yeah. everybody. Yeah. It's, like, it's wild. That's yeah. wild. So he just was a freak of nature yeah. before his time. Sure. Um, so I found him. I, I, he's always top of the list. And lacrosse champion. You can talk about playing different sports. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. exactly. And, and love lacrosse even more. He used yeah. to talk to me more about lacrosse. Really, Jason? You ever play lacrosse? <laughs> you should play. Yeah, your kids play lacrosse. He <laughs> saw that too. Really? Because yeah. now that's a, that is a real thing, thing now yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. But uh, so yeah. So Jim Brown's top. Then it's Bo Jackson. Okay, that's a little surprising. Then it's Bo Jackson, and this is personal. Yeah, yeah no, yeah, no, no, no I grew up in yeah. LA yeah. in the '80s and '90s. Mm-hmm. The LA Raiders were my team growing up. And Bo had a very short career. Career is he the biggest what if of all time? Oh, it's got to be possibly. But, but even so, like I feel like he fulfilled the potential. Yeah. You yeah. saw what he was yeah. able to do. Yeah, the, he was so good that the Raiders went without him for like four games a season because he was finishing the baseball season. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like yeah. in what world would you save a roster crazy. spot <laughs> yeah. for somebody who's yeah. only yeah. going to play for three quarters yeah. of the season? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's crazy. Like, what? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. he was that valuable. He's faster than everybody. Agile, great balance. Like one of those big freaks, like Jim Brown. Yeah. Yeah. He was the, the freakiest freak of the exactly. era. Right? Look, I tell people this: if you if you go watch Bo Jackson's film and put him up against anybody, even yeah. though it was a shorter career. And then if you don't believe that, go play Tecmo Bowl because they got it right. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you can't stop. You can't stop. You can't stop. Just do run, <laughs> run <laughs> one on Tecmo Bowl <laughs> and just see what's up. <laughs> 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 he took reps from Marcus Allen. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, a Hall of Famer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hall of Famer. He started over. Marcus Allen would start. Yeah. Bo would come and Bo would start. Yeah. yeah. It's wild. That's that, that, and that was just a wild team and a wild yeah. time. To be there at Raider game. Yeah. Your third, yeah. you see your third back. It's just so many backs. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm like, oh, he's, yeah. he's got a big direction. From Mississippi, yeah. I yeah. know yeah. 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 Third yeah. back. I mean, the third, the third one has to be Barry Sanders. Sanders. Uh, I knew good. it. Good. That's a good answer. And, yeah. I, and I and I almost want to put Marshall Faulkner because that's who I watched. No, Walter, right? Right? no, I mean, Walter's no, no, Walter's there too. But stylistically, it's personal. It's personal for me because I literally. Watched hours upon hours of Marshall Falk film. Yeah, because yeah. we went to San Diego State. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I would come home from Pop Warner practice, and it was like we just had the local TV station. We didn't have anything fancy, so I would like flip through the public access, and they would have San Diego State sure, games yeah, yeah. on where I grew up, mm-hmm. and so I would just watch. I was like, "Who is this guy?" I was, like, I was like emulating his moves, yeah. all that. So I follow him, but it, it's got to be Barry. Yes, yeah. Yeah. because. I love I mean, that list, man. No, I, I love that that's, list. That's the best I can do. Walter would be next. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. There's a bunch of... There's I mean, a, it's always like 1A, 1B. And there's they a bunch of folks. But that's why I say it's personal. Yeah. 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 That's well, why I say it's personal. Thank you for sharing that personal list yes. with us. And thank you for your time. Really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, thanks, thank Jason. you, guys. I'll slide back in time just to read this promo. Training camp is back in Ashburg, and it's totally open to fans. The first day will be open is July 27th. Head to commanders.com to snag your free tickets, totally free, and see the guys in action this summer. Michael Jenkins back with the team on Command Center. Just in time to talk. Running backs, Jason Wright was a running back. So mm-hmm. let's get into it. It's your mission debrief presented by FedEx, where now meets next. And we start with Antonio Gibson, the versatile guy in the backfield. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely, man. He, I mean, guy that's just so explosive, catches the football, football so well. You saw his diversity last year in terms of like how he gets those touches. Expecting more this year. Uh, the most well-rounded back we got in the backfield. He Absolutely. can do a little bit of everything. He can play wide receiver, X, Z, yeah. slot, whatever you need him to be. I have to go out on a limb right here. I think he's going to be the stop back of this season. Really? I think Antonio, <laughs> I think he's going to reintroduce himself. He's, his name is Ho. Yeah, I, can't, <laughs> I, can't talk I can't wait to see him. I can't wait to see him in his defense. I mean, I mean in his offense. I yeah. think EB brings a different element out of him. Yeah. yeah. And then Brian Robinson, a guy who has a, a bit of a different vibe and a, a bit of a different way to affect the defense. Wrecking ball. Yeah. Wrecking yeah. ball. I just see him running running people over, man, being that force. You know, he was a guy that was a rookie. You, you saw what he went through right before the season, you know, started. And, and for him to overcome that and still be that dynamic and be that dominant, man, 
oh, he's going to get a clean build of health, you know, this offseason. And, and you said you said wrecking ball, Tanner. Mm -hmm. I think the thing that sticks out to me is his vision, the nuance with which he plays the position, yeah. Yeah. the power, but also the dexterity of his feet. He's a yeah. very special football player. I mm -hmm. love when you use big words. You like that? I yeah. actually, the thing about him, he scares defensive backs because he, yeah. he would lean like on Like right this? Yeah. 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 Yes, he yeah. will beat you mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. And the one thing about DBs, we make business decisions all the time. <laughs> like, he's one of those running backs. He will make you make a business decision. Yeah. Okay, so Logan's using big words, but you made yeah. a big statement, which yeah. is you expect Gibson to be the guy. Why is that? I just feel like in this offense, he's going to be catching the ball in space yeah. a lot. Mm -hmm. He's going to be the one that breaks the long runs. And I just think as the year go on, how long can you keep a weapon like that yeah. on the bench? I just think, A.G., this is his year. I was going to say, the way E.B. finds space for the running back, especially mm -hmm. on check down screens, like the Gibson's the guy with that 4-3 speed that's going to make uh, capitalize on that. Yeah, I think the last few years, we saw how special he could be. Uh, this offense opens up a lot of the stuff that – I think why we drafted him, because he can do so much in the backfield, outside the backfield. It's nice to have that versatility. And speaking of camp, we've been talking about the commanders, defensive backs, you especially, Fred. I know yeah. you're excited about that. I am. A big reason for that, of course, the man out of Mississippi State, Emmanuel Forbes Jr. But there are a lot of interesting storylines this season, including some excitement around Benjamin St. Juice yeah. and veterans like Kendall Fuller as well. Let's get into this defensive backfield. What are you most excited to see from this group? I mean, this guy's got to start off. I know. Off, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm smiling face. like a little school kid. I'm, like, oh. I'm excited to see them play with this front. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm excited to see them work together. I have never had the privilege of playing with a front this dominant. Like I told these DBs, if I was y'all, I would never backpedal. Yeah. <laughs> like, people would have to beat me deep. <laughs> yeah. Because with this defensive line, the ball has to come out quick. And the beneficiaries of that are the defensive backs. I think for me, it's the youth and it's the flexibility and the dexterity that they bring to each position. So, like, you get Quan who can play safety, you play nickel, can play outside. That's excellent. You got Percy, you can play in the box and play post. You got Forrest, who showed his versatility last year. And then Cam, who is the Swiss Army Knife of Swiss Army Knife. He's playing true linebacker, true safety, Buffalo nickel, nickel. I'm excited because you can do so much with that backfield. And Jack Del Rio keeps talking about what he can do now. Can't wait to see it. And one of the things that Jack spoke on is just the communication aspect yeah. of it. I'm hoping that now with so many different guys that we just brought in, mm -hmm. they can catch up to speed because I think last year they turned the curve a little bit and they was communicating a little better in the back end. So I'm hoping the young guys could catch on and just not have to sit there and have one of those, those down years to really get caught up to speed early. This team likes that Buffalo nickel. Is Cam the guy to play that role? I mean, I, yeah. think, I think that's why you draft Quan, though. It's yeah. one of the things, one of the criticisms they said about Cam last year is that he's hurt, right? And this defense is not the same when he's hurt. Yeah. So we bring in a guy who has that same skill set, can Forrest grow into that role. And again, it's we're talking about modern NFL now. You need to find ways to get better athletes, better coverage players on the field. And now you've got a couple guys who's going to fill that out, who's going to offset Cam in his absence when he's playing that true post role. It's funny because people, they, 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 they get, trick you to get speed on the field and then they pound the ball yeah. at you. So th what he's saying is we need a couple of those DBs to step in and be big nickels. We need yeah. them to be able to sure. take on the C, the D, and the A gap. And, and I think we got a couple guys that can do that. Absolutely. And it's all about depth. You know, that, that's something yeah, we talked about. When Cam went down, who was going to be next? We yeah. didn't have that guy. So now you bring in depth. You bring in more bodies. You bring in youth. You bring in guys that you know it's just like we have an offensive line yeah. that interchangeable. You know, these guys can Position play multiple. Yeah. yeah, bingo. Well, all you guys are excited, but Fred, you're especially excited about these new <laughs> <DBs. laughs> Fired up. Listen, it just brings it out my soul, Jinx. It brings it out my soul. Time for Fred's Fired Up, presented by FanDuel. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports book partner of the Washington Commander. Welcome to Fred's Fired Up. Tell them why you're fired up. You know what I'm fired up about. I'm fired up about them defensive DBs, backs. That's and, and right. Dog. Yeah. I'm fired up about Kendall Fuller, who okay. got two touchdowns mm. last year. I'm fired up about St. Juice. 6'3, mm. 210 pounds. Love it. Can do whatever you need mm. him to do. Mm. I, I'm fired up about Cameron Curl being back. I'm talking about this is the guy that lets everybody else be do great. They want to do. He I is love the guy it. that let everybody be too, And I'm so fired up about Detroit because he showed everybody he can step in and do anything anybody else can. Perkins yeah. Butler is out there making plays. Oh, yeah. I'm saying the best player. I was like, what are we talking about? What are we talking about? I'm saying the best player. But I'm going to tell you what I'm really fired up about. The roof is on fire. The one of Manuel Bulls. Thank you, coach. Thank you, Mr. Pettit. Thank y'all for giving us a chance to watch this guy right here. And now I'm going to tell FedEx one thing. If number 13 gets his hand on the ball, mm -hmm. I want everybody politely to stand up. Left hand up. Yeah. That's what I want you to do. Let's tell the man to play. Because that's what's going to happen if 13 gets the ball. The man. And the ball will be fired up. That's a fact, Jack.
Well, the guy, it's cool Fred down. Let's focus in on the commander's second round pick, Quan Martin, defensive back out of Illinois. He's versatile in the backfield, something this coaching staff really values. And he played for Levy Smith, so he has some experience in that post-style defense. He also has some experience hanging out with Fred, which is invaluable. And welcome, first of all, brother. Congratulations. Thank you. Welcome to the family. Yes, sir. Quan! That ain't your first name, but that's the name you choose to go by. Yeah. Could you give us a reason why? Uh, so Quan been my my nickname growing since up. I was growing up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, my middle name is Daquan, so it's just part of my middle name. And uh, a lot of people have trouble pronouncing my first name, so Quan is easier. Well, you know, I had the regular name in football with Fred, <laughs> so that's that just what it is. But it was Frederick, but I took it as Fred yeah. as short. Yeah. Another thing, a lot of people don't know this about you. You were coached and recruited by Lovey Smith, a yeah. guy that I have a lot of affinity for, and a guy that I know knows DBs, and I watch your defensive backfield. I think all four of y'all got drafted, if I'm not mistaken, or at least three uh, of y'all. Yes, at sir. least three of y'all. So how was that to play with a coach like that and for a coach like that? Man, it was great. Uh, just learning from an NFL mindset coach and uh, just – him having experience in the league, man, really just taught us the game and uh, got me prepared for this moment. And do you think that's going to make it easier for you to learn the plays here uh, that you didn't play in the pro style defense for Lovey Smith? Yeah, I mean, it definitely has some carryover, man. And, uh, you know, I just take what I've learned from him and just apply it to my game here at the next level. And people realize that we took two defensive backs in the first two picks. And people been asking me, what do Quan play? And I said, the more I keep studying, what don't he play? <laughs> I, I, I watch you play nickel. Yeah. I watch you play big nickel. I watch you play outside. I watch you play right side, left side. What have the coaches told you? Or they just said, whatever you need, you will be. Yeah. Uh, so primarily in the nickel spot, um, I'll move around a little bit to safety, but mm -hmm. I'll probably start as, as a nickel mm -hmm. and then, you know, move around a little bit more like as, and, as and, I learn, learn more to play. And if the people at the DMV was asking you, well, what what does Quan bring to the table? What would you? How would you describe yourself as a DB? Because when I came out, I was a ball hog. I yeah. want to get the ball back. I'm a thief. I like to get the ball back. That's what you was getting in me. What are the fans in Washington getting in you? Uh, tough, smart, dependable player, man, and uh, just a guy who loves the game, guy who can go out there and do it, whatever it takes to help the team win and uh, mm -hmm. try to get the ball back to the offense. Here's a look at some of the numbers that Quan put up in college, and they are impressive. During his time in Champaign, he showcased his versatility, putting up over 20 passes defended and seven interceptions in his career. He also had more than 200 tackles throughout his career, even leading the team as tackles during his senior season. Fred, you sat down with him. Yeah. I know you're a big fan, but yeah. once you got to know him, what was your impression? Uh, the IQ. The mm -hmm. football IQ really blew me away, and it shouldn't have because he, he was uh, recruited by Lovey Smith, a, a pro coach, yeah. and taught how to play uh, pro secondary calls and stuff like that. But when I watched him on the field, he just fit in. And that's what I always want to see from young players. Do you fit in with the rest of the pros? He's a pro's pro. And when you got a guy like that that just looks at the coach and say, hey, whatever you need me to be, I can play corner, free safety, strong safety, whatever you need me to be, he'll be there. Yeah, I mean, he just spoke on it, versatility. I mean, that's one of the things that stand out to me when you're talking about that Buffalo nickel, you're talking about bringing in new guys. Can we put you uh, a number of places on the field and, and, and how can you respond? So versatility is key. I think the thing to me is, Fred, you mentioned the intelligence. It's just like seemingly like the natural football instincts, right? When we're watching, you know, uh, OTAs and minicamp, the way he's communicating with his teammates, he's only been here for about a week, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's just super impressive kind of his football IQ and that's something that Ron spoke on when they drafted him. For him and Emmanuel Forbes, so you can definitely tell that was a priority. For and he time. already looked like he'd been here before. He looked like somebody mm -hmm. daddy. He looked like, like a <laughs> <laughs> He got the older face, man. We don't give him that. He gonna get that. Get get that's somebody that, daddy over here. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to get you guys down to the practice field. It is your field pass brought to you by the Washington Times. Fred Smoot, we're on the field again. We live in our <laughs> younger days. Logan Paulson, Santana Moss, and we're going to give you some secrets of how DBs make plays, and it's not what you think it is. It's not what you think it is. And so I think it's interesting, Fred, yeah. right? Because yeah. I always think when you're playing man coverage, you're looking at your man. But you yeah. just told us yeah. that's not, not the case. I'm not. So I'm going to be the slot receiver, yeah. and Tana's going to be the outside receiver. Yeah. And you're covering Tana in a man concept. Yes, okay? I am. So now, I'm going to take what the offensive coordinator gives me. Okay. He just brought me speed. Okay. And when I say speed, I mean two wide receivers. Yeah. He brought me speed. He's going to tell on him. <laughs> and nobody ever likes to talk about it. Right. If he goes now, go low. Let's run line. Yep. yep. And I, I automatically know to come inside. Yeah. Because that's where Tanner coming. Yes. You are only going inside to make room for him. All right. To create the window, right? To create the throwing window. All right. Now, you go quick outside. 
Guess what time is coming? Inside. I know this. Yeah. All right? I'm going to play inside. So you are the telltale signal for me to go make plays on number one. And I know most people are like, no, nah, it's man to man. You in Tana, you in his face. I'm in his face, but through my peripheral, yeah. I'm looking here. Yes. Because now he gives me a chance to go make the play with him. You're basically just matching the pattern, right? You're yes. kind of, you're kind of, you're, you're, pattern fo reading. you're focused on this guy, but yes. you understand that there's only a certain number of combinations we can do from a two receiver set. And not only combinations, I'm also weaponized down and distance. Sure. Down and distance is also going to tell me how you want to attack me. Even if y'all going to come out and run a double dig, yeah, you're only dig. trying to get us to stay on your stem yeah. long enough to get inside, inside us. Inside, right. I see him gone. You know. I threw backpedaling. Yeah. So what I'm about not, what about this one, Fred? Because yeah. this is something I see is the is the dig on a drive, right? Yeah. With the shallow coming across and then a yeah. comeback out here. How do you play that? Is that and, game plan specific? No, no. That's game plan specific, but that's also that go your route. Yes. You see in cover four, nothing but comebacks be called. Yes. Like man to man, comebacks are the most dangerous route that we can run. Because one thing I'm gonna do is, especially with a guy like this, yeah. he take off and he start running. I'm running. Yeah. All right, now he gonna stop, yep. put his foot in the ground, I'm gonna be late. Yep. I'm going to be late. So that's just a tough one for you. That's always going to be a tough one. And that's what the defensive coordinator say. That's on me. Yeah. All right. That's the one route we cannot take away in this in, in this right here. So it got to be uh, called perfectly to get it ran. Absolutely. And so, like, what if we both run verticals? How do yeah. you play that? Patience. Patience. I'm just going to sit here and wait because I'm watching you. Yeah. You can feel them both, right? I'm watching both of them. And now you're just going to play into our hands. Yes. So it's, it's one of those things where your education helps you stop people. Tanner, is that something that you knew when you were playing? Never. And, and I, I grew up playing DB, you know, and I guess because I played on a, I guess, a, a lower level, you know. <laughs> but everyone just saw us play man-to-man, man, baby. We went toward all these concepts <laughs> and all that stuff, but it's interesting because yeah. if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, when you watch film, you're wondering why those guys are doing certain yeah. things, mirroring certain, you know, routes always inside when you coming inside yeah. when you got you know two by ones or two by th or, or, or three by ones yeah. it makes sense and that's why a guy like fred is able to you know be four four slow yeah and four, four, be able to keep <laughs> up with guys yes dude. Yes. Yes. yes it's here i can't believe y'all <laughs> it's all right here, man. it's all right here you know, you, you, now I know why yeah. Fred was always jumping yeah. around. Yeah, it's all right here. Dude, Fred, I mean, that was that was a great demo. Thanks so much. Really appreciate you, Fred, breaking that down, sharing all your secrets, These man. These guys are the worst. <laughs> all right, the worst. We got all the content you need right here coming to you live from Ashford on Monday. It's an exclusive player interview. Check out the podcast. I listened to you guys earlier today yeah. record that. That was fantastic. It's on Tuesday. This show right here comes your way on Wednesday, Command Center. Tannis takes. Tannis, what's coming up on Thursday? I got a couple of former teammates of productive. <laughs> oh, superlatives. Mm. Logan, you're living in the comments on Friday? What living in the comments, and we're talking. This week, we're talking about how all these DBs are going to fit in this defense and whether they're going to play linebacker, play safety, see what they're about. Another great week, another week closer to the season. Logan, Smoot, Tana, I'm Jinx. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next time. Hi, I'm Jeff Dick, Chairman and CEO of Main Street Bank. Every dollar we touch is not our own. Every dollar represents the countless hours spent on the construction site, late nights in the office, time away from family and friends. Remembering this keeps us in touch with what we do and who we do it for. At Main Street Bank, we are honored to be stewards of our clients' dreams, aspirations, and their money. Bank where trust matters and where you matter. Y'all still here? You must like it. So for more content, check out the links below.